Hi guys, welcome to this episode of Kung Fu Report. Today we're going to talk about the Haka Fist, of how to use the brushing movements against the slip, and also how to use it against the hit, and most importantly, how to train the power when you're in a position that seems like there is no power. See you when we get back. Sure, please come on in. So the brushing movement. The reason why I choose to give you a few ideas instead of a lot of application is I don't want you to start collecting tricks and get lost in application. Because this movement is all about power. Because look at my body. How the hell can somebody get power leaning back like that, right? So Chris does a swing. Now I'm gonna use my arm. That's it. Chris go hard. He's gonna knock me back as at least 100 pounds bigger. So I have to do what we do in Wing Chun and a lot of different martial arts, relying on the legs and the body to drive them forward to give them um, the structure of the arm power. So the arm is powered by the legs. Chris comes in again. Now I can stop him. But that's a lot of movement. Haka Fist was invented for close range combat during criminal assaults at night, most of the time. So you're not gonna be not bracing in a nice stance all the time when you're walking around carrying fruit. That's what the Hakanese people did. So if I have no balance, I'm like this, and Chris comes in hard again, I'm definitely gonna get knocked back. So the Hakanese people somehow figure out that they can lean back in a basket body and take impact without even relying on a brushing arm. At least in a brushing arm movement, there's arm structure. But now using the, the brushing technique, and Chris goes hard, if he goes any harder, he'll probably break his arm. I'm gonna go a little bit lighter. Chris does like that again. Let's see that slow. When I brush up, I brush down. See his balance? When I brush up and down, I start hitting with the hacker. And there I went like this. Because Chris is my buddy. That is actually a claw to the face. And then I'm like this. This is because Chris is my buddy. I would never do that either. This is a Leopard fist in the throat, but it hurts too much and it's not safe. Look, his arm goes all the way around. So it's a very, very sneaky movement, right? What brushes this way can brushes this way. Because if I'm stepping this way, he can go hard with I block this, I hit that, right? Now I'm gone there. So the brushing movement can be done like that, and I'm not gonna go anymore because it's time to hurt, right? So if Chris punches me, right? If I brushes this way, I'm here. Chris punch with the other hand. If it's round like that, you see the angle? Can you do it again, Chris? See all the space here? Chris does that again. It's easy to block, isn't it? Now, if Chris throws a direct vertical punch, also easy to block. But what happens if it's in between? If it's in between like this, it's not round, it's not straight, so it's not straight, it's not round, it's right in the oval. Not straight, not round, right in the oval. I get hit. I get hit. I get hit. None of these blocks are working. He's going right around my bones. So one of the things you can do is the brushing movement stops all of it. it. You don't have to guess if it's straight, if it's round, or it's in between. Remember Hakka is based on being in the dark. When you're in the dark, you can't tell the difference between if it's straight, a little bit curved, or a big curve. It's the dark. So the Hakka and these people are like, well, if it's straight, I'll do this. If it's round, I'll do that. If it's oval, in between, I'll do that. But in the dark, there's no way I can tell which one. How about we just brush the whole thing off? Now I don't care what angle it is. I take the entire vector. So when I'm here, if it's hit, I don't care if it's straight. I don't care if it's round. I simply don't care. I just brush. And when I brush, look at his balance. And what brush up must come down. Let's see that slope. When Chris's arm come at me, push my arm, Chris, to see the force, I tip that force and I slap his face. <laughs> the harder he hits me, the harder that comes back. In Hakka, when we slap, we claw right away. So we go hit, because that's the, the stick and pork ripping drill that we do is we slap a stick and we grab it and rip the flesh. That's a major haka drill. When it comes in like this, after I slap, I rip. So it doesn't matter if he's not going or not. So if he punches with that one, I can hear he hits. There it is. Now I claw. After that iron palm slap him, I rip whatever I can, and I go back into the Phoenix guy. 
That's what we enjoyed today's episode. So the most important thing that you want to think about is not the application, because the application is actually pretty easy to learn. If you strike and you hit on your brush, the important thing is actually the power generation, right? If you're interested in actually learning how to train this progressively, there's a Hakka Fist program in adamchenkongfu.com in the full immersion program. Hope to see you next time.